In 1980, an elusive group created a Stonehenge-type monument in the small town of Elberton, Georgia. On this monument, they left guidelines to bring about what they called the Age of Reason, but it's unknown exactly who they were and what their intentions are. Today, we examine the ominous Georgia Guidestones. This is Red Web. Welcome back, Task Force, to another episode of Red Web, the podcast all about internet mysteries, supernatural phenomenon, and unsolved true crime. I'm your resident mystery enthusiast, Trevor Collins, and joining me, hearing this mystery for the very first time, Alfredo Diaz. Hot take. They failed. They're supposed to bring in the age of reason. Mm-hmm. That didn't quite mm-hmm. work out. Am I right, Swifty? Am I right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm in my new, I'm in my, uh, my villain era. <laughs> You Wait, what's saying? happening? There's layers to this. <laughs> you know what I'm, saying? I'm just connecting with the Swifties out there. You know what? New thing. If I was to become president, I want to see the list of the people that are part of the Illuminati. You know, you know the people on on TikTok that make lists that like when somebody gives this is my ick, they went and they added that to a list. So they have like 600 things that you shouldn't do for a relationship because it gives someone an ick. Oh. You're you're developing a list of things that you would like to know once you become president. Yeah. Once and and your latest, my, once again, what was it? <clears throat> oh, uh, the the list of celebrities and the Illuminati. Right. Yeah. Got it. You know, there could be some people on there like, why the hell are they on there? Right. Well, you know what I mean? Right. Networking. No, uh, I promise. It was just an internship in the summer of 95. It's going to be weird to see things like, you know, I don't know, Kellogg's. <laughs> <laughs> just a whole company? There's a whole company. Are we talking about like John Kellogg? I mean, that. the whole the, Look, we don't know how deep the rabbit hole goes. Right. That's true. The topic for another day. I'll tell you what, though. When I leak that out, you won't find Red Web. That's true. Clean as a whistle. So the Georgia Guidestones, have you ever heard of these things? I've never heard of it. It's man-made, apparently. Man-made. Made of granite. So I'm, I'm interested more in, like, I guess the mystery is, like, why? Yeah. And and how is it supposed to bring the age of reason? And, um, but yeah, this seems to be, like, a mystery where we know that people did it. It's mm-hmm. not like aliens or something like that i mean then again the theory could be they were controlled by aliens because this is this show um but yeah i mean i'm interested to see who the people are you know some a lot of times we have mysteries where it's just like why did this happen who mm-hmm. put this there why is this there um we know it's man-made and we know the people put it there right but and it's in extent, recent history too yeah so 1980s we, you'd hope you got some receipts so we're gonna break it all down I'm, I'm gonna give you a brief description of what these guide stones look like and then we're gonna go into the history of these stones how they got there and then i'm gonna break down like all the dimensions kind of a little bit more about what's on these stones because there is engravings some inscriptions and things and then of course the theories that attempt to answer both but separately the two questions who is behind this but primarily what is this for not a lot of people were able to come up with theories as to like who's behind it, but we'll, we'll get into all that. And before we begin, as always, I just want to give a huge shout out to our task force members who are also first members. It's essentially our Patreon. If you want this podcast ad free, you want some extra exclusive behind the scenes content, some deleted scenes from some of our past ghost hunts, as well as a new show that we're calling Book Club where Fredo takes the reins as the host, walks us through popular media in the horror genre, movies, comics, books. That's happening March 1st. Yeah, like what's up with people liking um, uh, Sexy Ghost Face? Why is that all over TikTok? We might discuss that we someday might discuss on, that. on a book club. Look, it says book club, but like Red Web, everything's on the table. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we start with a comic. Right now, uh, we've just recorded the episode that is issues one through four of A Nice House on the Lake. So if you want to get ready for that episode, it is on March 1st. Fredo's holding it down. You're going to see me, Fredo, Christian, Jillian. We're all discussing the series four volumes at a time. And then we're going to move on to maybe a movie or a book or whatever comes next. But book club exclusively to support and thank our first members who helped this show. If you want to become a first member, you can go to redwebpod.com slash first. Okay, the Georgia Guidestones, very interesting monument and very recent in our history. It was a monument that somewhat resembled Stonehenge in its structure. It sat on the top of a hill in the U.S. state of Georgia. You can go ahead and take a look at that first image I got for you there. But basically, it consists of four granite slabs standing upright in an X formation. It's got a capstone laying on top in the middle. More details about this specific layout later. 
this looks heavy as all hell. Oh yeah. You can all, I mean, it's, I'll be honest, it looks like it's planted in like a little league baseball field because there's like a fence behind it. <laughs> yep, and there's like it does grass feel like and that. some dirt. Like it just kind of It's the sand lot. Yeah, it kind of looks like that. Uh -huh. It's like on some like dirt, but grass. And then there's like a, like a, like a, yeah, like a fence behind well, it. Well, clearly someone intended for that to stand forever. Forever. This sand is. Sandlot reference for the uh, Gen Z out there. This is heavy. Very. So, like, they have just big old construction vehicles, like, put this together. Oh, yeah, definitely someone was commissioned to stand it up. And we'll get into all those weeds when we talk about the history. How do we not have these guys locked in? We'll get into that. We'll talk about why. Because uh, I'll be honest, Task Force. This looks like some kind of art. See, like installation, someone had a freaking vision and they put it up there and and then you have all the art people are like, this is groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. So it just seems like it's just a legit thing that was put together. Yeah. That was signed off on, but apparently it wasn't. Well, yes and no. Oh. Yeah. So again, to give you a lay of these stones before we get into the deets, the Georgia Guidestones had instructions in eight of the most common languages to lead humanity into what the anonymous group called, quote, the age of reason. So of course you have eight languages on all four of those slabs. Each language could have had its own stone, stone. face. Yeah. Um, so there's, what is there, like Elvish, man, orc. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Keep going. He's uh, what else is there? <laughs> Nazgul. There we go. I, I was, Trevor's a big the Lord Black of the Rings speak. fan. I'm just pandering to him. I will not utter it here. I don't see the English side though. It might be facing away. I do away. see three different lengths. Oh, four if you count the top. There's a slab of top that's yeah. just laid down. It's um, got a capstone. Yeah, and then there's um, there's language on the just the side of it. Yeah. So when you're looking from above, there is a north-facing kind of slab. And so if you're going from the north, going around clockwise, in this order, you have English, Spanish, Swahili, Hindi, Hebrew, Arabic, Chinese, and Russian. Hebrew was chosen because of its connections to Judaism and Christianity, but of course, these are all very popular world languages. The inscription on the guide stones in all of these different languages reads in English, quote, and it's quite a long quote, so bear with me. Okay. Quote, maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. Unite humanity with a living new language. Rule passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Let all nations right. rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. Avoid petty laws and useless officials. Balance personal rights with social duties. Prize truth beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. Be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. So of course, when looking at these instructions, they might seem logically reasonable, but of course the first two feel to a lot of people quite sinister. And as a result, the Georgia Guidestones were defaced and threatened to be destroyed many times over the past 40 years. Of course, those would be the lines talking about limiting the world population to 500 million and especially the element of guiding reproduction with improving fitness and diversity in mind. See, first off, now I know why this never worked out and why it failed. They're asking for a lot of things that are good. It's just no one's ever going to abide by them. People of power aren't going to allow this. The whole limiting of the world population, like, I'll be honest, man, like, I, myself, being a human being, kind of like parasites on this planet we consume sure. we 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 expand we consume and we waste and, and we're just kind of like it's this moving plague i mean we can't keep repopulating that just it just causes more issues but you but it's also like how can you restrict people from exactly like, I, so I, I don't know no damn answer those for are that. the red flags that come up because people are like are you just saying that eventually maybe you know we find our way there or are you talking about something a lot like, more sinister yeah restricting population like or taking, taking people, people out. out yep or also how does one guide reproduction like right I that's don't there's some uh, some red flags all I over just that. I don't one. think you can. Right. So so those are the things that stand out to people in a more sinister way. Of course, when you're talking about avoiding petty laws and useless officials or balancing rights and uh, 
leaving room for nature. Those things all feel very nice, right? Like, let's respect nature, let's yeah. respect the planet. But then the other stuff kind of make people raise a heavy big old eyebrow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's just a lot of wishful thinking that's listed on there. You know, obviously it'd be great if like overpopulation was an issue. I just, like I said, I don't. 500 million is quite tiny. It's pretty tiny. For this planet. It's, it's very tiny. So I also think that that number is a little like. It uh, plays into very, the It's very restrictive. It's a little yeah. scaled back, but I don't know. And then you're asking like, you know, uh, unnecessary officials. I'm like, man, you gotta look at half of the officials. And you're gonna <laughs> be like, I'm useless. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think there's, again, we'll discuss a lot of these kind of elements in the theories before we kind of spiral here. But there's a lot of thinking of the time period that can play into this there's a lot of apocalyptic theories that can play into some of this and there's also a lot of like that air quotes new world order ideology that could be playing in here so we'll explore all that later but i think it's important to kind of wind back the clock go back in time and assess the history how these stones came to be then we'll kind of get into some of the numbers and some of the more details around the guide stones because some of that might be part of the puzzle but then, of course, we'll break down all the theories, okay. and then we'll really get into the weeds on our thoughts here. But in June of 1979, Elberton Granite Company was commissioned for the biggest project they had ever undertaken by that time. Elberton, Georgia is 90 miles or 145 kilometers east of Atlanta, the capital city of the beautiful state of Georgia. Yep. And it's known, by the way, as the, quote, granite capital of the world. Really? Yeah, I of didn't know that. the entire world? I, I mean, I don't know if it's of the world, but that's what they call themselves. Just like Austin is the live music capital of the world. Of the world, but um, yeah. And then some dude in his garage in Elperton's going like, hold on though, I got some right. tunes for you. Yeah. But that's basically because there's just so many quarries and it has so much granite. I mean, it's it's a fair name to have. Yeah. Now, a man named R.C. Christian, sometimes referred to as Robert C. Christian, said that he and quote, a small group of loyal Americans wanted to build a monument similar to Stonehenge. Okay, well, I'm out. You're out? I'm out. He hates the letter R. No. <laughs> he started talking about loyal Americans. I'm out. <laughs> right. Right. That, that, that's going to start leading down a path of, <laughs> of, I don't know, of a group of people I don't want to associate myself. There could be a lot of subtext <laughs> to that, to a phrase I know like in the that. beginning I was like, all right, I see some of these <laughs> ideas. I'm out. <laughs> You were in before you were out. You didn't even know it. So Christian believes Stonehenge had no meaning. So they wanted to create a structure with purpose. Now I hear a lot of knee jerk reactions. Careful drivers in the task force. I see you driving out there carefully. Listen, the purpose of Stonehenge has been widely debated by historians. There aren't many records from the time period as to, or at least when it was built. It's another mystery, perhaps for another time. But of course, one of the popular leading theories behind it is that it's some sort of calendar that of course it has something to do with the summer solstice the way the sun rises during certain solstices in the in the in the year so it kind of operates almost as a timekeeping device some people have also seen it to be a ritualistic area um, some sort of religious connotations again topic for another time but i'm again quoting this rc christian where he's like listen it's useless let yeah. me make something good also where the X-Men fought Apocalypse mm -hmm. and the Four Horsemen mm -hmm. in, in the animated series. Right. And when the sun rose on the summer solstice, Apocalypse looked nigh and went, Avast! And then turned to stone. Right? That's how it all ended. That's, how, that's yeah. That's the only way to, to end him. You got to get him at the specific spot. <laughs> turn him into stone. <laughs> <laughs> so Christian's group, okay? I'm just going to call them this group. This is this small group of loyal Americans he's talking about. So Christian's group had apparently been planning to create this monument for upwards of 20 years prior to it going up. Christian openly told the company president, Joe Fenley, the, the company president of the, of the Granite Company, that he was using a pseudonym and he wished to remain anonymous. So from the beginning, everyone kind of knew R.C. Christian was not his real name. But 20 years? Yeah. I'll be honest, this is, look, I'm not an artist. I'm not good with nothing. But 20 years to do that? He, he, so Fredo just glanced out at the table and went, 20 years for that? It is a relatively simple shape. Uh, <laughs> I give you that. <laughs> I think it might have been more about coming up with the idea, coming up with the money, maybe coming up with what exactly should go on it. Mm. Um, but yeah, 20 years, you know, I feel like I could knock out a project like this in a couple weeks. You know, this is yeah. a senior project at best. Yeah. Okay, I'm just, I'm just going hard on these stones. <laughs> so Christian openly told the president he had a pseudonym. 
Fendley, the president, described Christian as a well-dressed, balding, with gray hair man, and he reportedly thought that Christian was a, quote, nut. Not exactly sure the nature of their deeper conversations, but this is kind of the vibe that he was getting. Christian's ideas included stones larger than Elberton had ever worked with before, and these stones were designed to track time, both as a clock and as a calendar. Again, we'll get into those details. Now, Fenley reportedly tried to dissuade him by quoting very high prices, basically gouging him, saying, like, this is an untenable project. But Christian was unfazed and responded by asking for a trustworthy local banker to kind of make this happen. How do I finance this project then? Damn. Okay, that's very interesting that the, was it the president of this? Mm-hmm. Joe Fenley. Fenley was, yeah. I mean, even Fenley was like, this is a little over the top. Kind of don't want to do this mm-hmm. or kind of don't care to take part in this. Mm-hmm. I'll throw out a ridiculous number. Ridiculous number is met. So this guy has also got money. Yeah. Huh. And so he then says, all right, point me to your most trustworthy local banker. And that's when Fendley suggested Christian meet with the president of Granite City Bank, Wyatt Martin. So when asked about Christian, Martin in a later interview kind of described him again, well-dressed, very intelligent. But Martin at the time told Christian that he had to verify his identity in order to pay for the project. He's like, I can't pull out a loan on this pseudonym We're going to have to do something here. And Christian required that Martin never share his real identity. And then he sent the money through multiple banks in order to create some sort of like impossible to track line of of currency, basically, so he could continue to distance himself from the project. So the money laundered basically through multiple banks in order to make its way to to this particular bank. you still track that. I feel like you maybe could. Right. Yeah. Unless, Unless you're splitting up every dollar. <laughs> and right. even then, just take a while. Yeah, I, I don't know. So Martin, after this point, is the only person that knows who this person is, knows their actual identity. And because of that and kind of the proximity to the money and, and the person, Martin then worked as an intermediary between Christian and the Granite Company. Now, eventually the Georgia Guidestones were made and were eventually unveiled on March 22nd, 1980, with over 200 people in attendance on the property. This property was about seven miles or 11 kilometers north of Elberton. After the unveiling, the project was considered complete. So in order to continue covering his tracks completely, Christian then requested that the contracts and all of the plans for the Guidestones be destroyed. However, many years later in 2009, Martin actually told Wired in an interview that he had yet to destroy all that evidence. I'm just gonna go ahead and spoil it. We don't have it. Damn it. But he didn't destroy it. So the answers are somewhere. So tell them to give it up. Right, right. So like I said before, the monument sat on top of a hill outside of town on a five acre piece of land that Christian purchased from a farmer, a local farmer, Wayne Mullinax. He and his family retained the cattle grazing rights to the monument. So it's a fun little fact. The reason why there's a fence around that is because after a few months, maybe years of the cattle grazing around the monument, they began using the monument as like a scratch post. So all the, all the cattle will kind of gravitate to it and just kind of be rubbing along the side. So they, they put up a, a fence around it to prevent that. But, but after the Guidestones were built, Christian left Elberton and only communicated to Martin or via Martin. And what's interesting is that Martin told Wired in that same interview that Christian never sent correspondence from the same location twice. So... Even through the years following, this guy is on the move, talking through various, I guess, at this point, local addresses and P.O. boxes. And I'll whatnot. be honest. It seems a little over the top for what this is. Sure. <laughs> like, I, would, I would agree. Like, I get that some of this stuff here will anger people. But at the end of the day, it's like this person has gone to great lengths and energy expended in order to hide their identity. Do you and, think it, and so it, far it seems just not necessary? Yeah. Do you think he's trying to stoke the flames of a mystery that by it being Ooh. like, oh, it's that guy over there and I see his face, it kind of like Ooh. kills the allure? Like I if mean, you saw that the Stonehenge was made by a guy named John Kellogg and he just like... There is less allure. Yeah. There's less allure. I mean, it's, it's like... I mean, we wouldn't be talking about it. But for sure. Um, so, I mean, there's a... A metal band that's blowing up right now called Sleep Token. And their whole big thing is they all have these different masks. They paint their bodies. Mm-hmm. And they, like, you know, obviously, you can find people. You could right. Google their identities. I know they are. They, you got Sticky Pete. Sticky Pete. Got Sticky he's, Pete. Like, he's on the drums. You Pete. got Slap Him 
Sally Some on the Sally, bass. Basing it up. And then uh, the Tom the Tom stick. Yep. The Tom Tom stick. It's weird that they went with that name. I thought it was but. too literal, but also it was weird for the guitarist to use the drummer's name. Exactly. I just don't know. And then you got. And they're blowing up because they're so confused. Right. And then, <laughs> and then you got Screamy, Screamy Joe, and Screamy that's just Joe. their roadie. But like, <laughs> they're huge because just people are just obsessed with like these personas and, and right. not, you know, the not them not ha- knowing their identities and stuff like yeah. that. That's a big reason why they've blown up. And That's so really like cool. I totally see I totally see that. That makes sense. It that, creates more that, allure, but it also creates more lore. An, yeah. You're like, what's yeah. the story behind That's that? Definitely an angle for yeah. sure. Now this is interesting. So apparently the Atlanta Constitution, which is a local paper, reported in the same year of its unveiling in nineteen eighty that there were plans to erect more guidestones that followed the moon cycles. So again, I'll get to it, but there's basically calendar elements to this. these stones. They mostly center around the sun. So now we have ideas around the moon cycles, but if this is true, the project obviously was never completed because no more stones ever yeah, went up, but it is fascinating. Now it's unknown exactly how much the guidestones cost, but that very same newspaper, the Atlanta Constitution, reported that it was over $100,000 at the time, and using an online inflation calculator to bring it up to modern U.S. currency amounts, it's about $400,000. Damn. It's a lot, but also surprisingly not as much as I'd think. It's a lot, but someone can do it. You know what yeah. I mean? I feel like you could sell your house. Right. Probably back then. When I'm someone surprised Elon someone Musk hasn't like put up their like 50. Ha- yeah. Like someone, like someone could- <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like someone could have bought their house in like 1960 for like two chickens and an egg and then sold it for $400,000. You know what I mean? And then just <laughs> stupidly spent it on this. Right. But also, they well, they bought land too. Yes. Yeah, they bought so. this small kind of piece of land on that but, five it, acres. But it's not like, I don't know. It, it's, it's not like, oh, you need to be a part of the 1% to achieve something like this. Right. I, I would have thought maybe, I don't know, millions, but it is granite. I was expecting like a mill, but like it's granite. You are in a place where granite is in abundance. So yeah, I Yeah, you don't have to, to transport it far. There. Granite's not all that super expensive. And this was upcharged all hell too. Right. Interesting. Well, okay. So the Moonstones never came to pass. It's again, it's a reported value. That's kind of all we can go on. Yeah. But then on July 6, 2022, very recently, as far as time goes, an explosive device was attached to the pillar that has the Swahili and Hindi languages on it. And that bomb went off around 4 a.m. If you'd known about the Guidestones, you'd known about this. It, it hit a lot of news articles, but the explosion damaged completely that particular slab crumbling it down but it also damaged the capstone a little bit up top it's oh. unknown who did this or why or at least that information hasn't been made public but eventually the remaining pillars were dismantled and given to the elberton granite association and the land was then returned to mullinex and his family who was the previous owner and it's unlikely that the georgia guidestones will ever be repaired as both fendley the banker and the elusive christian whoever they may have been have since passed away oh so we think that they passed away we just haven't as heard far as we're aware did christian do you have any um like well, something we know that the banker did though yeah he, he was a publicly known individual yeah. it could be that unless you have an article christian it could be that this their liaison fendley having passed away meant that they had no longer had a person to speak through and so maybe we just haven't heard of them or heard from yeah. them but it's also possible that it's been you know 40 plus years so if they were older at that time right it's, you know, I'm pretty up, pretty far up there. Yeah, we don't really know for sure why they said that Christian had passed away. I, from what we could find, I don't think there was any like official communication from any type of liaison or something saying that Christian had passed away. Or if, like you're saying, Trevor, it was just an assumption based on his age at the time and how much time has passed. But it's just widely assumed that mm. he has passed away. We've got letters to personal individuals, personal letters. From J.R.R. Tolkien flying through the auction houses, but we can't figure out what correspondence this man had. It's true. Interesting. Well, I That's, guess he didn't. That, that probably goes he made for a stones. While. He didn't make. Yeah, he, he didn't make books that literature. transcend generation. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that probably went for a lot of money. Oh, oh, they do. When they start and they're like a hundred, I'm like I'm in. And then when they go to a hundred thousand, I go I'm, 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 I'm out. You get to raise that card though. <laughs> yeah, like, I go. <laughs> I'm like, all right, and then never to in the be back. raised again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's very interesting. I mean, 
I don't feel like I, I this, you know, obviously is a mystery. People talk about it. It made some headlines, but it just definitely seemed like more of a personal project. Yeah. And an expensive one at that. So, so I'm not surprised that the moon like monument wasn't built. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or the different like, what is it? Signs, Sagittarius, Leo, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to leave you with it. You'll find it. Um, Give me your Sticky Pete version of it. Like your call sign. Yep. That's What's your what call sign? Your celestial... Stop. Your yeah. celestial signal. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. Your know. star sign? <laughs> star is it a star sign? sign? Astrological it's sign? Astrological sign is okay. what it is. He's a star <laughs> sign. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm with you on that. Now... I do want to break down some of the more detailed elements to the stones because, in fact, there is a explanation guide stone off to the side. Wait, what? Yeah, there's a there's a slab in the ground that kind of explains a little bit further as to what's going on with these tablets. But let me start from the top. So, okay. the Georgia guide stones, as I mentioned, it's like four standing rectangular slabs. Think monolith, right, from 2001: Space Odyssey. They're all placed in kind of an X formation where if the middle of the X isn't jointed, there is a pillar in the middle, but there's kind of also a gap in the middle. On top of those four slabs and on top of the pillar rests a rectangular capstone laying down across them. One of the slabs contains a hole, which would help a viewer look to find Polaris, the North Star. I have an image of that for you in here in Task Force. All images will hit our social at Red Web Pod. Oh, wow. But yeah. And then there's another image I have for you. It's a slot in the very same stone that's aligned with the solstices and equinoxes. So again, it kind of creates that solar calendar. Well, yes, yeah, so this was like thought out to be more. Yeah. I mean, what is it? So image the that's supposed to be aligned with like the equinox or whatever. Mm-hmm. It seems like it's just like a horizontal like cut out in the yeah. slab that, that like narrows into a square but it, it looks like it's just kind of like level like six feet uh, i don't know just like you look out into a tree line is what <laughs> yeah. you look out to so. yeah that's where this i think the sun would uh if you're stood probably on the inside of that looking out mm-hmm. that's where the sun would rise come through that little slit oh that's cool so there's another hole in the very top in the capstone which would allow light every single day through to hit the bottom at noon so and, and i'll kind of get to it but basically it, it's a structural way to see certain moments throughout the calendar year. So if you wanted to keep pace throughout a calendar year without any sort of technology, you could do that. You could also see the time of day each day. You could know when noon was by way of the sun's rays shining through. It's it's interesting. Oh, and on top of that, there are also support stones built into the ground, much like a house. You don't want this thing oh. settling because of its weight and kind yeah. of drifting. So there are some support stones underneath. Now, each stone has the same 10 instructions mentioned at the beginning of the episode. An additional granite tablet lays on the ground like I talked about. It's the explanation for the guide stones, and it reads, quote, the Georgia guide stones, center cluster erected March 22nd, 1980. Let these be guide stones to an age of reason. I don't know why they talk like that, but I have an image of what that tablet looks like. There's some other stuff on it, but... Oh, yeah, it's like a full-on gigantic slide. There's a lot of... I'll be honest. There's, there's a big old slab. There's a lot of empty space here. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And like an interesting amount of empty space. Yeah. It's interesting that you point that out because there are some gaps in the language here at the very end, at the kind of the very bottom. But the phrase I just read, let these be guide stones to an age of reason. That phrase is also written in four ancient languages across the edges of the capstone. And those languages include Sanskrit, Egyptian hieroglyphics, Babylonian cuneiform, and classical Greek. So basically, this this is a little bit of all language possible. Not not all language, but like a lot of language. Yeah. And it so is. it could almost act like some sort of modern Rosetta Stone. If if in the far future this thing still stood, people could kind of like reverse engineer some of our language. I'm not sure if that's one of the purposes, but it you know yeah. could have been. Now, as you continue to look at that kind of explanation tablet, I'll read kind of verbatim some of the things on it. It included the explanations for how to use the tablets. Quote, astronomic features. One, channel through the stone indicates celestial pole. That's the Polaris star. Two, horizontal slot indicates annual travel of sun. 
Again, that's kind of the equinoxes and solstices. And then three, it says, quote, sunbeam through capstone marks noontime throughout the year. It then goes on to list the physical attributes of the guide stones, of which there are very many. I'm not going to read every single number, but for the sake of any puzzlers out there, in case this is part of the mystery, I'll read a few. But it gives the physical data. The overall height is 19 feet, 3 inches, or 5.87 meters. The total weight is 237,746 pounds, or 107,840 kilograms. At that point, it then breaks down the weight and dimensions of the four major stones, the center stone, the capstone, the support stones, and the support stone within the base. All in all, this is about 951 cubic feet of granite, or 26.9 cubic meters. It says that the granite was quarried from pyramid quarries located three miles, five kilometers, west of Elberton, Georgia. So to me, this is kind of like, when we think about Stonehenge, people kind of analyze the molecular structure of the granite or of the stone, I should say, to try to figure out where these stones came from. And they go, oh my gosh, if this is correct, these stones came from miles and miles and miles away. And this guy's like, listen, just for the future, I'm going to put a stamp and said it came yeah. from right over there. Well, if it is modeled, it's supposed to be modeled like after Stonehenge, then, you know, I feel like they, they, they kind of took a look and saw some of the questions people had and tried to answer them. Yes, it does um, feel like that. So, yeah, I mean, I see that. It, it seems like they were trying to be a more modern Stonehenge for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, at the bottom, there is limited information on the creators. It says author, R.C. Christian, and then under that, in parentheses, it says a pseudonym. And I said that correctly. It says, quote, a pseudonym, not pseudonym, as in there's a typo on the tablet. Oh, come on. Yeah. But it does say, hey, I'm going to put my pseudonym, my fake name on this thing. Yeah. So they're, they're open about their fake name. Yeah. Then it says sponsors, a small group of Americans who seek the age of reason. And then it says time capsule placed six feet, 1.83 meters below this spot. Next line on. Next line, to be opened on. And after both... Ooh! Yeah, but after both instances of on, it's blank. As in, a date was never inscribed on this tablet, and so we never really knew the purpose of this, of this time capsule. But suffice to say, people eventually dug six feet under this location when the guide stones were removed, and... Oh, thank God. I was like, it's not... They're removed, and there's no time. That mm -hmm, should be dug mm -hmm. up by now. Well, there's no time capsule. Damn it. Yeah. So did it not just get to it? I, I mean, maybe he was like, I'll, I'll inscribe this in later once I tunnel under it and put a little trinket or a box of toys, and then I'll dig back out. But I guess the time capsule was never placed and the date was never inscribed. Oh, that was a cool little like piece that, which- I would have like, been very curious what that would have been. I know. I felt like it would have been just more questions. This episode of Red Web is sponsored by BetterHelp. A common misconception about relationships is that they have to be easy in order to be, quote, right. But sometimes the best ones happen when both people put in the work to make them great. Therapy can be a great place to work through the challenges you face in all of your relationships, whether it's friends, work, your significant other, or any other relationship you got going on. I really enjoy how approachable BetterHelp makes it. You go online, go to their website, got a little quick Q&A, and they will get you, uh, funneled into the right therapist for your specific needs, and they make it easy to swap around. They, again, they make it approachable, which is the most important part about therapy because a lot of people, you know, they ride the fence. They're not sure if it's going to be right for them. I love that part. Now, if you're thinking about starting therapy, BetterHelp is a great option. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient and flexible. All you have to do is fill out the survey and they'll match you with a licensed therapist. Plus, you can switch therapists at any time. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit BetterHelp.com slash RedWeb today to get 10% off your first month. Again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash RedWeb. So now this all leads us to the theories. And of course, anyone looking at this mystery is left with two questions. Who is the person behind this RC Christian and behind this group? Who are they? Well, unfortunately, a lot of the theories tend to focus more on the second question, which is, what is the purpose? Again, this is with the idea of looking much deeper than the surface purpose of this, because the surface level purpose is to tell time, have a calendar, have a, essentially an air quotes clock, but also to propose 
their, I don't know, their, their commandments, their, their theology, right? Otherwise, like if you're looking deeper, that's where our theories come in. So many who come across the Georgia Guidestones reading through the rules kind of flag two things. And we already talked about them, but to recap, it's basically the air quotes reproducing wisely and the limiting a population of the world down to 500 million from what is currently 8 billion. At the time, I believe in 1980, it was about 4 billion. So it's still a huge decrease. Wow. Oh yeah, we've doubled since then, 40 years. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Science is keeping us healthy. Oh yeah. Ish. So from this kind of staunch ideology, a lot of people have jumped to the conclusion that the Georgia Guidestones were created by a cult. Particularly, the main sub-theory within cults is that it was a group of Satanists. Oh. Oh yeah. That's an interesting turn. It is. So with the 10 guidelines, a lot of theorists kind of compare these to the Ten Commandments. So some might see this then as a concept of blasphemy, that they're kind of referencing the Ten Commandments. But because of that, the Guidestones have been called by some the Ten Commandments of the Antichrist. Others have called the creators of the Guidestones, quote, sun worshipers. Either way, to me, this theory seems to be an attempt to label otherwise like a generic term of heretics, just somebody who has dissenting opinions with those who are more religious. The group was clearly very wealthy, so perhaps they obtained this wealth through their cult members, just kind of everybody funneling into this one project. Yep, everyone put a dollar into the basket. Mm -hmm. And to kind of continue to fuel the rumors of this being a cult, there have been rumors of cult-like rituals held at the Georgia Guidestones, though again, those are mostly rumors and many of them stand unsubstantiated. Now, according to Wired, Charlie Clamp, the sandblaster who etched the letters on every stone, claimed to have been distracted by, quote, strange music and disjointed voices. Does he kind of expand a little bit more on, was that kind of in his head as he's working on it? Was this kind of in the area around him? in the area? Because I could see somebody who is working on something mysterious kind of having, I mean, I've seen it before. Self-hallucinating because they're kind of like in this mental Because they're working on, yeah, they're working on something so mysterious and that they kind of like, their brain might want to fill in some gaps. All it says in the article is that basically what we have in the outline, he had been constantly distracted by strange music and disjointed voices, and it doesn't go into much further detail. Gotcha. Now, so far to me, I'm just going to speak from my own opinion, it does seem like a lot of people like to just go, it must be a cult because this is strange and mysterious and uh, clearly they have some sort of ideology. And I think that's pretty much what everyone's just going off of. However, to kind of build on the idea of, again, broad term cult here, it also appears that this group, this potential cult expects some sort of apocalypse. And in more recent years, this has then expanded. The idea behind these stones has expanded to include the quote Illuminati and New World Order conspiracies, which is essentially the idea that the world will have a unifying government. And there are some kind of discussions. They they talk about having a global court. And so it's not, you know, it's not unsubstantiated. So it started to get attached to other conspiracies and those conspiracies also have attachments to cults and things. So what I'm trying to say is it feels a little thin, especially knowing the theories that we're going to discuss a little bit later. But conspiracy theorists see the Georgia Guidestones as evidence that some sort of Illuminati-esque group is trying to decrease the world's population. According to Smithsonian Magazine, some believe that, quote, therefore establishing the beginnings of a totalitarian tribal government, end quote. Many also believe that the stones promote globalism and a total world government since they advise on having a global court system. Globalism is often used to describe a political and economic ideology of interconnectedness with all other countries. This is sometimes seen as a step towards one global government, also known as that kind of new world order idea. I mean, this seems like such a lackluster way of like getting your point across to the masses, though. You know what I mean? So sure. Like creating a subliminal ad and putting it on the Super Bowl or something, you know? I mean, it's got us talking about it. It, so, it does, but like, are the masses talking? Or, or the that's, masses a, good talking that's a good like, point. That's a very good point. Sure, like local news, um, you know, and but what, like, I don't know if you're this big Illuminati, big world order. I just feel like what a what a very small project. Yeah, like two hundred people were there at the unveiling. You know what I mean? Like, you had cows rubbing up on it, using it as a scratching. Yeah. Post. That's <laughs> so true. It's like, 
You know, it doesn't feel all that serious, but you know, yeah. a lot of cults either start super small or kind of peak super small. And again, the world of cults is is wild and nebulous, but coming back to the cornerstone of this particular theory that the cult is specifically more of a satanic angle, it is worth mentioning that while the stones do talk a little bit, maybe they might lean a little bit more globalist in their ideology, there's no evidence of specifically satanic worship. And personally, I think Satanists and cults tend to be the go-to for anyone promoting some sort of dissenting belief. The fact that there is a staunch ideology on these tablets makes people go, I don't know what the answer is, but there's clearly a group behind this. Therefore, yeah. let's just kind of say it's a, it's cult, right? And leave it at that. So that's kind of the broad strokes theory. Yeah, I do feel like we're kind of, they're kind of quick to label as a cult, though. I mean, it does have some cold and immoral, if not problematic, ideas on it. For sure. And they do talk about, how, like, you know, and the supporters of these, you know, the, the people that help put this together. Mm hmm. I guess coming back to, like, the sun worship, one could argue that it, it, there is some sort of sun worshiping going on because, of course, you have the solstice elements, the noon sun element. A little bit of the Polaris action. Of course, it's not the sun, but it's a star. It does use the sun's light in various ways. But the same could be said about Stonehenge and other monuments that are structured in certain ways. All in all, you know, there's no evidence of specifically cult activity. But again, I do think that it is a broad swath term to try to just like, let me just wrap up this little group that's behind yeah. this, right? Could be a cult, could just be a group, you know, just like with people having ideas. I don't know. I guess what is... Christian technically the definition of a cult. We haven't really done any episodes specifically breaking down cults, but I would wonder like when a group would that cross the line to become a cult, you know what yeah. I mean? According to Merriam-Webster, they have a few different definitions, so I can just rattle them off. Sure. A religion regarded as unorthodox or spurious, a great devotion to a person, idea, object, movement, or work, such as a film or book, a system of religious beliefs and ritual, and a system for the cure of disease based on dogma set forth by its promulgator. I don't know if I said that word correctly. Well, I mean, with that okay. in mind... So not Red Web. Not, not <laughs> again, not Red Web. But, I mean, with that in mind, you know, it doesn't take like a very specific kind of situation to qualify. I mean, like, there's a lot of those elements here. Yeah. So again, it's not like a very, very specific theory. It's just kind of like... Trying feels to categorize like it. Yeah. I think. yeah. But with that said, I do want to move into the next couple of theories because I do think they get a little bit more specific and offer some interesting insight, especially the last theory we're going to talk about. I'm I was it was very interesting. But before we get there, the most common theory is that the guide stones were built for a coming apocalypse. A tale as old as time, a worry as old yep. as mankind, the apocalypse, the end of the world. So some claimed at least until they were damaged and removed, that the monument was built to be strong enough to withstand the apocalypse. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if there was some kind of disaster, then hopefully at least one survivor stumbling across these stones, my words, could read at least one of these common languages, right? Imagine a world a thousand years from now, completely desolate, and now you have a Mad Max situation. Everyone's driving these dune buggies around, yep, but then someone road. kind of pops a tire on, a, on one of these stones poking out of the ground. Like, what is this? They scoop it away and they go, oh, I can read that. And civilization is boom, rekindled. That's kind of what people think this stone's purpose was. To that anticipate the apocalypse and get people these stones that have all the knowledge necessary to rebuild humanity. That is a Hail Mary of a, of a plan. That's right, but sometimes a, a people ten. win games off those. That, that, that is true. That is true. Mm -hmm. But more often than not, the percentage is quite right, low. Right, and the Ravens know more often than not, the Chiefs are going <laughs> to intercept. <laughs> Sorry, it happened. Um, yeah, I mean, sure. Yeah. I, <laughs> I think it's it's really interesting because, yeah, I mean, yeah. You you have in the, la in the world where technology lacks, you do have this thing that can kind of help you tell time. Um, it's not unique in that way, but it is an, a, a big old fancy sundial. Yeah, for sure. I mean, look, if the world went to, to sh a zombie apocalypse or something like that, then, you know, sure, maybe I pick to, like, create crops in a little house next to this thing. Yeah. Because then and you'd I be can, like, that's mine. You'd sell tickets. No, yeah. yeah. Rebuild the economy on just that. Try and rebuild it. Well, I'll always be able to tell, you know, <laughs> right. when the middle of the day is. 
Everyone, Everyone comes over oh, to old Alfredo to ask yep. what time. What time when, is when's it? Summer. Uh, it's past middle of the day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sometime past noon. Great, thanks. <laughs> I looked up and I saw that. But here's the thing, and this does recontextualize, doesn't change the tone to me, but recontextualizes some of the items on this rule set because under this theory, people think then, ah, maybe these instructions are for. Rebuilding. The advice of a new civilization yeah. for a restart, to restart with new rules to prevent, again, assuming the ideology baked in, but to prevent any sort of issues with humanity and conflict, right? And so, again, that's that's assuming the, the creator's deeper intent, but it is part of this apocalypse theory. Of course, the astronomical features of the stone would help people find the true north, which is good coordinates. You have time you have seasons in a sense i feel like ancient civilizations figured all that out with sticks and shadows and yeah <laughs> math but i mean this is a good kind of calculator to to jump a few steps a little bit but i don't know i think you know that does make a lot of sense yeah i mean i could the thing is like the person leaves so much about this monument and what it is yet you know we don't have these very specific questions answered Mm -hmm. Whether it's like to help build a new civilization or to help influence the current civilization. So it's like we know a handful about it, but not its true purpose. Now, within the confines of the apocalypse theory, people do take into account the time period. This does play into a lot of the mysteries we talked about. So considering this group was planning this for about 20 years leading up to 1980, they would probably have high anxieties due to the ongoing Cold War, the threat of nuclear war, the potential threat of nuclear fallout, basically it's just true. a wipeout of the planet. And so maybe that was playing into their thinking. Maybe that was motivating their very staunch, steadfast rules that, again, feel very like, wow, you believe something so so big, so firmly. Maybe it was born of a time of conflict, right? The stones clearly would not have been able to survive apocalypse, though, depending on what type of apocalypse they anticipated. Yep, exactly. But a small explosion device took out one of the tablets. I don't think, an, you know, I don't think it was nuke-proof. Nope. It would have survived weathering because it is it's granite. It's yeah. a very sturdy element. But so that maybe either plays into the apocalypse they expected which maybe wasn't nuclear in purpose, or it kind of wrinkles the idea of this theory. Though, I don't know, maybe True. granite was the strongest element they could get their hand on. Not element, compound, but to get their hands on. Because I can't imagine something this size that's just pure steel, right? Or a pure lead version of this. Right. I don't know. Yeah, that, that's kind of go against the theory of um, this being a post-apocalyptic type of tablet which i like that theory a lot yeah i think the only other wrinkles are what then is the age of reason is it and again this is just my own kind of musings but is it then after the apocalypse that humanity with the help of these stones can then regrow back to what is then an age of reason with all this hindsight baked into these stones i don't know but to me this is someone who wanted to essentially leave an imprint they looked back on Stonehenge, they looked back on the pyramids like we all do with, with awe, and maybe why not try to create some awe of your own? You know, you want to you wanna leave something that will outlive you, and this person decided to close some logical gaps that are left behind by those monuments, and then basically put the instructions on the box. Yeah, I mean, I could, I could see that. But it's just a weird, it's a very interesting way of, of doing it, I guess. Yeah. Very Time, egocentric too. I yeah, want to create Stonehenge, yeah, it really but is. better. It's um, it's an interesting use of uh, time and resources. Yeah. Now this is where the next theory comes in, and it's wildly fascinating. I actually had I've heard a lot about the Georgia Guidestones, just kind of as an idea, nothing super deep. To me, this theory is what makes these stones worth talking about because personally, I love looking a little bit at history. I love kind of considering how people's different belief systems kind of impact culture and how culture can impact humanity. And just, I don't know, I'm a little geeking out, but it's like, it's a very interesting take. And it goes way back to, especially with the, the language of loyal Americans in play, it takes us back a little bit more to colonial times and some of the 
ideologies of some of the founding fathers, as it were. So, author Jay Widener has theorized that the group behind the Georgia Guidestones is hinted at in the anonymous man's pseudonym, R.C. Christian. He claims that R.C. could stand for Rose Cross or Christian Rosenkreutz, who founded Rosicrucianism, also known as the Order of the Red Cross. This figure may simply be a legend, but the Red Cross represents Christianity linked with alchemy. Simply put, Rosicrucianism is the theology of Christian mysticism, or for those who are more interested, per Merriam-Webster, Rosicrucianism is, quote, an adherent of a 17th and 18th century movement professing esoteric and occult wisdom with emphasis on mysticism and spiritual enlightenment, end quote. In a manifesto supposedly written by Rosenkreutz, it states, quote, the word RC should be their seal, mark, and character. So the purpose of the Guidestones, an age of reason, could also be a reference to Thomas Paine's book, The Age of Reason, same name. Thomas Paine was a founding father of the United States and wrote Common Sense to call for independence of the 13 colonies. He is believed to be a Rosicrucian. The Age of Reason primarily argues against organized religion. A person claiming to be R.C. Christian actually published a book in 1986 called Common Sense Renewed and wrote this, quote, I am the originator of the Georgia Guidestones and the sole author of its inscriptions. I have had the assistance of a number of other American citizens in bringing the monument into being. We have no mysterious purposes or ulterior motives. We seek common sense pathways to a peaceful world without bias or particular creeds or philosophies. There is no way to confirm if the person who commissioned the Guidestones is the same as the person who wrote this book, but so far it's the most substantial thing we have. I feel like if you're going to go as far to like write a book to claim it, Mm-hmm. And you've got receipts that you can yeah. show, right? Like you, you can show the like the funds and how they were moved around, who they were paid out to. I mean, you can get people to confirm, like maybe like the the builders and stuff like that. Yeah, stuff only you would know. Yeah. Or you show your face and right. you look like a well dressed, intelligent man that's balding with gray hair. Yeah, you know? that too. Like I feel like there's there's you could outright just prove that you can. Yeah. And, like, that's something they obviously want to do because they're writing a whole damn book about it. So, I, I don't know, man. I, I see this as something that, like, someone's just trying to capitalize on and sure. isn't the person. So, this person would have to be that person if this theory were to be true. Because the fact that they went with R.C. Christian but also called their book Common Sense Renewed then links back pretty well to Thomas Paine's Common Sense and also the kind of RC being very central to this Rosicrucianism. Again, I think this is probably one of the more intriguing, but also maybe more accurate theories, but it's also just my take. I could see that. I just think that like this person saying, listen, there's nothing deeper. This is just me expounding upon my beliefs. People help me fund it. These are my words. It's based on Rosicrucianism or just their disposition on the world. I mean, that's totally possible. It is possible that a rich person, I joked earlier, Elon Musk could slam up about 500 of these things and that's just one dude commissioning people to do it. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily have to have a deeper reason, but you're right. There is something to be said. I always raise an eyebrow when someone's book for profit comes out claiming to be associated with something that's kind of mysterious. Yeah, but also like you have a ton of ways to prove it. Yeah. Now, even with a lot of these similarities, it's still unknown exactly why Rosicrucians would be involved with something like the Georgia Guidestones. However, the Rosicrucian Code of Life, as it were, does mention things that are similar to the Guidestones' instructions. The code mentions that nature is very sacred to avoid religious fanaticism, and if oneself is in power to not make rules that are unjust. So basically, the entire back two-thirds of these rule sets are mirrored pretty well in the Code of Life per Rosicrucianism. Though otherwise, the code and the Guidestones aren't very similar at all. So again, you have that overlap, Uh, and then you have some not overlap. Yeah, and so it's a mystery. Right. Now, the Guidestones themselves don't mention anything occult that could be associated with mysticism or the occult besides a possible belief in a coming apocalypse. However, Rosicrucians believe that they have been passed down ancient knowledge that others do not have. So perhaps this is how the particular group of Rosicrucians sought to do that they themselves want to continue passing forward knowledge. Either way, accurate or not, I just thought it was a really interesting theory 
that connects a lot of interesting dots that do line up in, in interesting ways while other things don't. And um, it's one of those things that kind of, I don't know, it was refreshing to not, like a lot of theories go, oh, well, it's just a hoax or, oh, it's just a cult and there's not much deeper. This clearly had some thought put into it and some of it could very well be valid. Yeah, I think it's the most interesting theory out of all the ones that were, pre that were presented. It's probably not the one I would subscribe to, but mm. I think it's very, I think it's the most interesting by far. What makes, like, what stands out to you the most, whether it's one of these theories or maybe your own just kind of gut check as far as like why these stones exist? Uh, I think this is someone that kind of had this ideology that's a little self-centered and just a little over the top, a little weird, a little wild, and then just decided that this is what they wanted to spend their time and money on. Mm. And I feel like the the fact that this took 20 years is probably just something that they just had on the back burner that they slowly worked on. And yeah. then went, I'm just going to spend my money on this. For sure. And, you know, R.C. Christian reportedly said that, quote, the group feels by having their identity remain secret, it will not distract from the monument and its meaning. That's interesting to me because, like, I'm kind of with you. Regardless of Rosicrucianism, I do think that this is somebody who has something to say or a group of people that have something to say. But I would almost want to say that because these beliefs seem to be a little bit more dissenting to popular belief or popular religion, especially at the time, that maybe anonymity allowed them to be a little bit more blunt and safeguarded their personal selves, their own identity from any sort of retribution or, I don't know, just negative emotion backlash. or backlash, you know, whatever could come of saying like, you know, if you believe that the world population should be harshly cut or somehow make its way down to 500 million and that you say stuff about how people should reproduce, I can see why you maybe not want to put your name on the assignment. Yeah, for sure. But they also don't like overly commit to some of the things that they're saying. Mm. Kind of just kind of skim a, a bunch of things, but they don't really, I mean, grant <laughs> And granted, this is this is all you only have so much space, right? right? And you're trying to also tackle this in multiple languages. But I feel like it's pretty surface level, right? There's there's it's kind of just like general guidelines and wishful thinking, and there's no really like direction. Yeah. Like if you truly think about it, it's a lot of like generalization of things, not truly like this is how you should go about it or directions on how you should go about it. Um, so there's that too. Yeah, it's, that's true, too. I mean, if you're going to go through all the effort of putting out, like, this is what I believe. I'm going to make sure it's in all these different languages. I'm going to make sure I explain it properly. I'm going to put all the weights and numbers. I mean, the weights and numbers, why do I care how heavy these stones are? Yeah. Unless you're bragging about the, the effort. But again, you used modern machinery in somebody else's company to do it. So That's I, true, too. I'm going, like, you went really descriptive on the stuff that doesn't apparently matter. And you went a little broad strokes on your theology. Yeah. Like maybe use that explanation stone to go a little deeper. Unless these numbers are part of some sort of geometric puzzle or they explain something else. But again, by his own claims, reportedly, it doesn't go much deeper than that. It is surface level. I don't know. It's a fascinating topic. And clearly we're talking about it. Clearly he's, he's struck some intrigue. And now while the stones still don't exist anymore, they've been dismantled since the one tablet had been kind of exploded a couple years ago. It, I think, will continue to intrigue people and and raise questions, but I think as we kind of close out this case, it's uh, it's interesting, it compels me, but it's I feel like it's a lot simpler than theorists want to make it, just personally. I completely agree. Yeah. I think this is Sometimes just Sometimes they're just surface. That just wanted to get their ideas out there in a, in a very, like, eccentric way. Yeah. And they did that, for sure. I do think that, yeah, I uh, sure it's a theory that the real person came out and said there's nothing more than than just this. I completely agree, though. I could I subscribe to that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll leave you with one example that substantiates my disposition. There was a a man recently who took a small bag of flaming hot Cheetos, okay. put them into a block of epoxy, okay. suspended them by steel cables in a giant cement sarcophagus and then buried it and then put a tablet on top of it. And basically there's no purpose behind it other than to make people go, huh? Imagine a future civilization comes across. And again, this 
maybe it's the same thing happening with the guide stones here. A future civilization stumbles across someone's little passion project and they just go, man, the past was weird. Maybe, yeah. what, if, what if Stonehenge was just that? It's like, it totally let's, could let's have throw been. up some stones well, and people are going to go, what? They're going to go wild over this. Let's oh, make this 100%. giant pyramid and have no purpose behind it. That'd be, I mean, I don't know. Look, you think people trolling other people was invented recently? No. no that's a no, long no, time ago. No. People were playing pranks on others. Yeah. Anyway, Fredo, with that said, that's the Georgia Guidestones. I will see you back here next Monday for yet another episode. Oh,